What's going on YouTube? Mr. Wheels here once again welcoming you to another edition of Sports Talk and this is part 4 of my 2014-2015 NHL season preview and tonight I'm looking at the Pacific Division and before I get into that I want to do a very brief recap of the Central Division um, and before I say anything as always guys I'd ask you to please like this video please subscribe to my channel you can follow me on Twitter at Sledgehead86 and I'd ask you to please like my Facebook fan page, Mr. Wheels 86 And please, guys, I'd ask you to um, like this or share this video as well. I really could use the support. Um, I'm trying to reach a broader audience. I would really appreciate it. And you can click the annotation uh, to see the Central Division preview in its entirety. But just a brief recap. Um, in terms of who's going to finish 1, 2, 3 in the Central I believe it to be in no particular order, Chicago, Colorado, and Minnesota, but I'm iffy about Minnesota. I know there's a lot of people that are high on, on them because uh, of their top six forward depth, but I think um, Nashville or Dallas could also have something to say about um, who finishes in that third spot. I think if um, Pecorene and Nashville is healthy, then Nashville definitely has a shot to finish third in the division. Dallas is also going to be good with the signings of uh, Spezza and uh, Hemsky to give them a solid second line. Um, but that's mainly my recap of the Central Division. Click the annotation to see the, um, the full preview in its entirety. Let's get into the Pacific Division starting with the Edmonton Oilers. They were 29-44-9 and nine last season. That was good enough for last in the Pacific Division and last in the Western Conference. So they can really only go up from here. I believe Dallas Eakin is the right coach for the job, but there still needs to be a lot um, improved upon. Um, guys that are gone from last season are Sam Gagne, Taylor Fatoon, Anton Beloff, Patrick Larson, Ryan Smith, who retired, and Ryan Jones, and Mark Frazier. And they added Teddy Perso, Benoit Pouliot, Mark Thain. They drafted Leon Dreisaitl, added Keith Olley, and Steve Pisano. And I think they're going to miss a guy like uh, Mark Frazier because not even three years ago, Mark Frazier was on the New Jersey Devils team that got to the Stanley Cup Finals, and he was a depth defenseman for them. So if the Oilers were to make a deep playoff run, I think they would miss a guy like Frazier. Um, but Mark Thane should help um, Andrew Ferenczi out quite a bit. And Benoit Pouillot is going to add um, some offense, just like David Perron did. Who I don't like is, the, is Keith Oley, who I think is a... Um, defensive liability. Now, all that being said, I think the young draft picks that are already in Edmonton, like Taylor Hall, Jordan Everly, uh, Nugent Hopkins, and Neil Yakupov, they're all going to need to step up and really provide um, some leadership and offense and, and all that. I think Edmonton still does not make the playoffs, but hopefully they will improve on their horrible record from last season. Now let's move on to the Calgary Flames, who were 35, 40, and 7 last season. That was good enough for 6 in the, in the Pacific Division. Um, now, finally the Flames have a solid goaltender. They struggled in that last season. Um, they added uh, Jonas Hiller in net, so that solidifies their goaltending. They brought in a new GM, Brad Living who I believe is the son of Jim Trilliving, who, um, off of the TV show uh, Dragon's Den. He replaces Brian Burke, and they the players they got rid of were Chris Butler, uh, Mike Camilleri, Blair Jones, Joey McDonald, and Shane O'Brien. And they were 23rd in offense last season, and Mike Camilleri led the team with 26 goals, so they are going to struggle to score this season. They added Mason Raymond, Jonas Hiller, as I've already talked about, Derek England, and Brandon Bowling. And to me, although they did add a solid goaltender, 
somebody who's going to help him out. I don't think they added near enough offense to replace Camilleri. Mason Raymond will help out a little bit, but he definitely will not fill the shoes of Camilleri. Um, so, at best, Calgary, in my opinion, does not finish top three in the Pacific Division, and they're a bubble team at best. Now let's move on to Vancouver. They were 36, 35, and 11 last season. That was good enough for sixth in the Pacific Division. John Tortorella is out as coach. Um, Mike Hillis is also out as GM. Uh, Willie Desjardins is the new coach, and Jim Benning is the new GM. Now, Ryan Kessler, Jason Garrison, David Booth, Mike Santorelli, and Zach Dalpe are all they're gone from last season's team. However, the Canucks added Ryan Miller, Radim Verbana, uh, Nick Bonino, Lucas Fiza. Those two guys came over in the trade for Kessler. Kessler went to Anaheim. Um, they added, the Canucks also added Jordan Schrader, Derek Dorsett, and Lyndon Vay. And I believe, I think the biggest thing for the Canucks is, one, they added a solid goal, a proven solid goaltender in Ryan Miller, uh, who needs to have a bounce back season after the playoff collapse in St. Louis. Um, but the, he, he's going to replace Roberto Luongo, and mainly, and you know, because they wouldn't have they wouldn't have survived with just Eddie Lack and uh, Jakob Markstrom. Uh, but really, the biggest question for the Canucks is uh, Nick Bonino. Is he going to be their second? Is he good enough to be their second line center? And who? How do they replace the offense of Ryan Kessler? Um, Roddy Mbrana. I mean, he looks really it looks really weird not having number 17 be Ryan Kessler in Vancouver. I've already played NHL 15. Trust me, it, it's weird. Um, so I think Vancouver could finish probably no better than third in the division, and that's being uh, generous. Um, there's a lot of teams in this division that are kind of, to me, they're on the bubble. Um, I'm not saying Vancouver can't make the playoffs. I just think that they really need to bounce back after – uh, the season they had last year. But they most likely are a playoff team. Let's move on to Arizona. They were 37, 30, and 15 last year. That was good enough for fourth in the Pacific. Uh, they missed the playoffs for the second straight year. Um, they've got a new look. They are now the Arizona Coyotes, no, no longer the Phoenix Coyotes. But I don't think a new look will help the Desert Dogs at all. Um, they got rid of but that even Bravada, as I've already said, he went to Vancouver. They brought out Mike Rivero. Tim Kennedy is gone. Paul Bissonette is gone. Derek Morris is gone yet again from Arizona. He's been there a couple times. Um, they added Sam Gagne, Joe Fatale, Devin Dubnik, Mike McKenna, and BJ Crombine. And really, I think what is going to doom the the Coyotes this season, is the signing of Devin, Devin Dubnik. I mean, he was horrible in Edmonton last year. I'm surprised he still even has an NHL job. I am really not high on this guy. He's on my shit list, just like a guy like Keith Olley. I think these guys are overrated. Um, now, Dubnik will back up Mike Smith, but even having a guy like that as your backup, I mean, he'll probably ex be expected to play 20 games and He'd be lucky if he won 10 of them. Um, so really, I to wrap, like to sum the Coyotes up, I really don't think they did um, enough adding the right players to make a playoff run. Um, they, they might surprise getting rid of a guy like Mike Ribeiro, who had some issues, uh, might help them enough. But um, I really wouldn't bank on them uh finishing high up in the division. Uh, so I'm going to say they're not a playoff team. Now let's move on to Anaheim. They had a great season last year. 54 wins, 20 losses, and 
eight. Uh, that was good enough for getting them into the second round. And they lost to the LA Kings. And not only did they lose to, in the second round of the Kings, they lost a ton of their depth scoring um, from last season. And some of that was due to retirement and trades and just free agency and, and just off-season things in general. And so many people in Southern California are so hyped up that Ryan Kessler is going to come in and they finally got a solid second line center behind Getzlaff. But you know what? I mean, if there's nobody there to play with them, um, how much difference is it really going to make? I mean, I mean, I think Vancouver's in a better position without Kessler because they added more significant pieces. And Anaheim lost so many significant pieces. Team Mussolini, Saku Koibu, Nick Bonino, Lucas Pisa, uh, Stefan Robida, Jonas Hiller, um, Matthew Perot, Daniel Winnick, all of those guys are gone. And what does that mean? Not only did they have, not only is some of their solid goaltending gone, and they have to now rely on Frederick Anderson and John Gibson, who are two very young goaltenders. Um, but they lost like all their depth um, scoring, in my opinion, um, because if you watch the playoffs. Guys like Bonino and Perot and Winnick, like those those guys were the, the kind of the glue that I think helped the Anaheim even get to uh, the second round of the playoffs. And uh, without those guys, you know, there's still some there's still some good players on the team. Don't get me wrong, but the other issue with Anaheim is, to me, from watching them last year. You know, compared to the Kings, who eventually went on to win the Cup, Anaheim showed a lot of immaturity with the way they celebrated goals, um, their lack of um, poise in uh, cri critical moments. Like guys like Perry and Getzlaff didn't step up and and play the and they were not clutch when they need when they needed to be, and that really hurt uh, the Ducks is what I'm trying to say, and losing all these guys is just going to make it worse. So, um, I think because of the guys they lost, Anaheim will not have a deep playoff run, probably a first round exit if they make the playoffs at all, but I think regular season wise they are good enough to finish um, potentially second in the division, but I'm going to say they finish no better than third possibly take the wild card spot of the Western Conference. But I am being very generous when I say that. Um, now let's move on to San Jose. And I, I do not like San Jose and Anaheim, so I am being very nice here. Um, San Jose, similar season to Anaheim, 51, 22, and 9. Um, and they had a first round collapse. They shit the bed again. They choked. I don't care if people don't like me saying that. It happened. And yes, saying they choked isn't giving credit to, maybe enough credit to L.A., but, I mean, these guys blew a 3 nothing series lead. Um, and to make matters worse, they lost Dan Boyle, uh, Brad Stewart, and Martin Havlat in the offseason. And that was, those three guys were veteran players. Dan Boyle was a leader. Brad Stewart made the team tough to play against. Uh, Martin Havlat added some, or there was your, some of your depth scoring. And they added John Scott and time again. And the biggest thing I noticed about this team in the playoffs is all they had out there was meatheads. Um, you know, Brad Stewart to me is a bit of a meathead and just a goon. Um, uh, what, what's his name? Rafi Torres, he's another goon that was out there, not helping the Sharks cause uh, in terms of closing out the Kings when they were up 3-0. Three, three um, they should be okay on defense. Brett Burns is moving back to defense. They've got De Demers and uh, Irving and Mark Edward Vlasic that are still all there. They should be okay. Um, Brett Burns will hopefully provide some leadership on defense. But it takes away from a net front presence and having him 
you know, uh, bang in front of the net on offense. Um, so that's a bit disappointing. But there's a lot of drama right now with San Jose. They've got Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe who have no trade clauses. They won't waive them. Um, you know, so I think this is all really going to affect the uh, Sharks' uh, ability to make the playoffs again. And, and there, there's talk of rebuild. And really, they should just... They should have already just blown up the team in the offseason and started to rebuild, started to draft players again and, and try to get some high draft picks, but they didn't. And their team looks quite similar to last season. And they added more meatheads, more goons. I don't think it's going to help their cause even if they do get into the playoffs. So I'm going to say um, San Jose, you know, they could be top three in the division, but I doubt it. Um, I think you'll see them take a huge step back this year and not make the playoffs. Now, let's move on to the LA Kings. They were 46-28 and 8 last season. Good enough for third in the division. And one eventually won their third Stanley Cup in three years. Um, and I'm going to be really hard on the Kings. I like the Kings. Uh, Justin Williams is from my hometown. He's a buddy of mine. Um... And I'm going to be really hard on the Kings and really hard on him because I want to see them do well. Um, the door is wide open this year, in my opinion, considering the changes to all these teams. Um, for the Kings to, to do no better or no worse than first in the division, I, I expect them to be the Kings of the Pacific Division. I think they should compete for the President's Trophy because they have pretty much their whole team still intact except for Willie Mitchell and Colin Frazier. And Colin Frazier didn't even play in the playoffs uh, last season. They added Adam uh, Cracknell, and to me that equals toughness. Um, and playing in um, Sutter, uh, Sutter's system, uh, I think he will be, you know, he's a bit of a meathead, but... He'll, he will add the right kind of toughness because if LA does go up against teams like San Jose or St. Louis, those teams are tough to play against. They need more um, grinders and tough guys on their team. Um, the, the the good news about um, LA this year or this offseason besides um, winning the cup, they signed Mary Gabrick who was a rental player seven years, um, signed them long-term. Matt Green, who was crucial on defense for them, um, signed a four-year deal. This is where, this is what needs to happen this season. Justin Williams, Smythe Trophy winner, needs to prove that wasn't a fluke. In my opinion, it wasn't. He deserved that trophy, um, even though he was surprised to get it. And he needs to have a huge season. Um, Twice already in his in the in his career in the past, he's been a 30 goal scorer. He needs to be up around um, 30 goals again this year. He was on pace for 28 last season. He slowed down. That wasn't good enough. I'm going to say Williams alone needs to put up probably about a 70 point season minimum. Um, the great thing about the Kings is they play. Um, Within a system, they all play together. They're mature. Um, when they, you know, when they score, they don't showboat. It's you know, ho hum kind of thing. That's what I really like about them. So I'm going to say, at minimum, they get back to the conference finals for like the fourth year in a row. Um, and I think they are. Um, the first team that could be poised for a repeat in almost 20 years. Um, so there you have it, guys. There is my preview of the Pacific Division, concluding my 2014-2015 um, NHL uh, season preview and predictions. Thank you so much for watching. Um, coming, The next big thing on this channel will be um, a preview and predictions of the MLB playoffs. I hope you will um, be excited for that. And that's all I have for right now, so I'll see you next time.